Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor and the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app on Apple. Recommend Apple Podcasts on Android, Spotify, or the Five Reasons YouTube channel. Also, check out Off the Floor. We're taking episode suggestions from Off the Floor directly the entire month of August. We've got some cool stuff coming up for you the next couple of weeks, which our followers there provided. Make sure you're a subscriber as well. You can communicate with Heat fans all day long as well other nba fans and us check it out again off the floor link is right here in the description two dollars and 99 cents per month also check out the great sponsors of the five reasons sports network i mean there was no reason to keep watching that team usa game today except to see if anthony edwards was going to go over his prop right that's why we stayed on playback that's what prize picks does for you by the way he did he ended up covering it easily we were sweating out nine and a half because he was like stuck on seven forever anyway i had a good run i won all four of my cards today go to prizepicks.com use the code five f-i-v-e legal in the state of florida we always told you that they match your initial deposit up to a hundred dollars now they're doing better now they're doing better you only need to put down five bucks when you enter the promo code five Play a lineup, they hand you $50 to play. No strings attached. Use the code 5, F-I-V-E, at prizepigs.com. And now, today's episode. Down to Biscay. Yay. Uh, five on the floor. Ride for my dogs. Where here's the thing. You can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buck and Sam, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor plan. Got an all band. Y'all seen the block. Stop the one hand. And Pat, we trust, it's power, have the guts. We're here to bring the heat. Y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. Well, welcome back to Five on the Floor. Here's today's floor plan. As I mentioned, we were watching Team USA throttle Brazil today. Easily covered the number. Hope you played that on Better Edge. You can use the code 5RSN there. I just got sponsors everywhere. Uh, Team USA advances to the semifinals. Serbia comes back from, what, like 25 down against Australia. We almost got to see uh, Olympic Patty Mills against Team USA. He probably would have scored 45 points. But uh, alas, no. Instead, we'll see Jokic. And we may see Jovic. He was out sick today, so no report yet on whether or not he'll be ready for the next game, which comes up on Thursday. We'll have coverage for you on playback of that. On the other side of the bracket, mild surprise, I think, the way that Canada was playing. Canada swept through its group, which is considered to be the toughest group in the Olympics. They swept through. They were 3-0, only for Dylan Brooks and Jamal Murray to completely bleep the bed today. And because of that, SGA's 27, SGA's 27 were not enough. France advances after benching Rudy Gobert, or at least not starting him in the game. And now they play Germany, which has emerged as kind of the dark horse here. Uh, They were the world champions. Dennis Schroeder plays at a different level here, and they've got the Wagner brothers playing extraordinarily well. So what we're going to go through quickly today is, can anybody beat this team? This USA team has really not been pressed since South Sudan did in the exhibition. And of course, they came back and won that game. Pretty easily. Um, Steve Kerr refuses to start the same starting lineup. I don't really understand why at this stage. He's, he's pretty much, it's, it's like he's starting Curry and LeBron and then he fills in the other pieces. Trying uh, to make LeBron's everyone happy. I guess. Um, right. LeBron got some stitches today, uh, but he's expected to be back. He had nine assists. He's playing at a very, very high level. Um, still bringing Durant off the bench, still bringing Edwards off the bench, still bringing Bam off the bench. Although Bam and AD off the bench, although Bam did start the second half today. First, um, before we get to who can beat this team, what did you think of Bam's performance today? 9.7 rebounds. Just doing what he does, man. Like, I think the way that he's been able to, um, you know, really take advantage of playing with such talent on both ends of the floor has been fun to watch because I feel like he's willing to take more risk and put himself in places where, you know, we know he can do, but maybe he hesitate, hesitates to during the heat season because of the personnel around him and always having to you know cover up for so many guys on defense like him just kind of roaming around in the passing lanes and going for these types of steals that he got today it, it was fun to watch and then on uh, other than that like he does what he does like he he gobbled up a few boards in his first few minutes of his stint and i just think has been solid all around for them right like you know has had a couple of higher scoring games but most times it's not going to score too many right it's just going to be a guy who gets like relief points for you you know, hits the occasional three or two, and, and and that's great that he's added that to his game. Other than that, like, he really keeps playing 
while also like the, despite the fact that they have an extremely talented uh big man group right which it feels like is not usually team usa strength but when you you know despite the fact that he's playing on the same roster as Embiid and ad he keeps finding minutes he hasn't been benched yet and i hope we don't jinx that here and you know we've seen other guys have to kind of sacrifice and not play certain games and i think it's because of how impactful he is alongside other great players how he can just fit in with you know whichever lineup they want to throw out there because he, he doesn't need the ball in his hands too much and can fill in those relief points can screen can pass can roll and can now pop out to the three occasionally so it's been cool to see him incorporate that part of his game with the shooting and try to see how it works right kind of test it out a bit because he is being left open and um I, it's cool to see him try to fit in while adding this new part of his game and he's able to do certain things he might not do during the heat season so it's been cool man like nothing too crazy but he's doing his job and doing it well enough to where he keeps getting minutes despite who he's playing with well and i think some people would go to the idea of well they're playing Jokic next and so we're going to see more Embiid. but if anybody watched the first matchup against serbia the mm -hmm. last thing that you want is more mb now mb did get the charity start today and I think he scored 14 in the first half and then sat down afterwards. Um, so they got him some scoring. Uh, the matchups between him and Jokic have not gone particularly well. And look, we know AD's history against Jokic. What have the Lakers lost 3,000 consecutive games against Denver in, in, in th those particular matchups? Bam's going to play in the semi. Like, I, 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 look, Spo knows that, look, you're not stopping Jokic if he's playing at the level he was playing at today. He basically carried them back into that game. But, but Bam makes him work more than others. I, th I, I, just because he's relentless, I, I feel like he just gets under Jokic's skin a little bit. So I do think you're going to see him in this next game. Uh, to me, what this comes down to is, uh, you know, first thing, we don't know if Jokic is going to play. And I don't know how much he's going to be integrated if they're not playing in this past game. But, like, are they going to get good Bogdanovich in this game? Like, that's – they need to um, because they need to get something from their guards. They didn't in the first game. Hasn't shot the ball particularly well overall in this tournament. Um, U.S. is I, – I didn't see what the line is right now. But probably favored in the teens, I would guess, or maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, but I, I, we keep saying this after every game that Bam plays, and I'm glad you hit on this, that he's pretty much been able to slide into any situation. First thing, the three, Anthony Edwards passed him that one today, and, like, Bam goes right up now. Like, there's no hesitation whatsoever, and Spo has to have noticed this. We've talked about this on several podcasts. He really hasn't had a bad game. Like, he really has not had – he's had some games, of course, the triple single thing, and this was a triple single today too, of course. And he got, you know, he put, fake got mad at the Heat's social media team for posting his triple single. But we haven't come out of a game and said Bam played poorly. Bam looked like he didn't have energy. Um, and this speaks really well because, again, it's not just them playing right now. It's they're they're like they're they're all over the place and they've been all over the place for the past month. And now they're all and there it is a 17 and a half line. I, I nearly nailed it. Look at that for U.S. Serbia. Uh, so you can play that on better edge using code five RSN. They um, they've been everywhere and he's been everywhere. I mean, he was fencing. I don't know if people saw that. Uh, I guess he's become really close friends. I can never pronounce the guy's name, but he's uh, this very charismatic fencer uh, who Bam actually. You should check out Bam's IG on this because uh, he actually we usually see Jimmy doing the side quests. Bam was doing has been doing the side quests um, and he's been everywhere. And and honestly, like he's become, I think, and I, I we keep saying this, but not just popular with his teammates, but it seems like NBA fans have gravitated towards him. Like he's the one taking the, the pictures of Kevin Durant falling asleep on the bus. Like he's kind of become like sort of the clown of this group in a good way. And I, I just think the whole experience has been great for him. But anyway, pivoting back to this, do you give Serbia any chance to beat you? For sure. No doubt. Um, I think 17 and a half is actually a crazy line, right? Like I think it's going to be a more competitive game than that. Um, I ultimately think Team USA wins, but having, you know, perhaps the best player in the entire thing right uh is a big help for them i think Jokic is that good you mentioned it earlier like he was the reason they had that um you know wild comeback from a big deficit versus australia that was a great game france canada was a great game so like we talked about like i think it's there's these teams are good now nowhere mm -hmm. near as talented as team usa and maybe the team that was anywhere near as talented with nba guys got eliminated today in canada so mm -hmm. um i still i like i think the rest of the, the teams left are all good like france germany 
uh, and Serbia, I think, are all good. I think Serbia has a chance. I think if Jokic just has a monster game, uh, they can do it. And if, like you mentioned, their shooters get hot and Bogdanovic or, the, uh, you know, Petrusev, I think it's how you pronounce his name. Uh, <laughs> you know, that guy is an international killer as a shooter. I just think, like, they have, you know, very good chemistry with each other. I don't think they'll win, but I do think it'll be much closer than what the line is saying. And, you know, it would be cool to see Jokic, like, come back from being sick and obviously – not too long ago, come back from an injury and, and have a, you know, a good game because he hasn't really been able to find his rhythm here. Um, hasn't had a big sample of minutes. Like they're playing other guys over him that aren't NBA guys. So it would be cool if he came back and, and was able to, you know, um, get himself some more minutes on this stage. Cause I think, you know, we all want to see it. It's on the other side of the bracket, and then uh, when we come back from the break, I want to get into more specifics on Team USA. Uh, France, Germany. So uh, you have Wemby, Gobert for what it's worth, Fournier, who, like, he's stashed in the NBA for two seasons and comes out, and all of a sudden he's back to Olympic Fournier. Uh, but Schroeder is terrific uh, in, in international competition. We've seen this. He earned himself a contract because of the World Cup, basically. And obviously now he's, uh, you know, now he has 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 another uh, long term deal in the NBA. But also the Wagner brother, like Franz, has been tremendous. How do you see that playing out? Um, I think Germany should probably be favored. I haven't seen the line or anything like that for them for that game. But uh, you know, they got the gold last time in the World Cup, and like you mentioned, like they have great chemistry together. They have guys who have just been really productive. Right, like you mentioned, Franz, he's averaging 21 per game, which is pretty impressive to do an in international play. Uh, Schroeder av averaging 18 points a game. You know, former NBA player who didn't really pan out, um, Isaac Bonga, right? Uh, former Washington Wizard, he's been their third leading scorer at almost 11 points a game. Then you've got Mo Wagner, you got Daniel Tice, right? And that's kind of their core guys. Like, I, you know, they, they play together pretty well. They also have a shooter, uh, what's his name? Obst. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but I remember him from last time. Like I, I know he can. It feels like all of these teams have like shooters that that we don't really know about, but then you find out about them when they're left open, right? And uh, like the way that Germany was able to win last time was really impressed me. I didn't think it was fluky. I just thought they played a nice brand of basketball, and they did that with Franz Wagner struggling last time. And of course, this is going to be much tougher for them. Like it's it's tougher competition. But he's been really good for them, right? So it's not just Schroeder trying to do everything offensively. Um, like, I think they, they their team looks maybe even better than last time around. So they should be favored. But France, like, you've got Victor down there. You've got Gobert down there. He got benched today. I wonder if they start him versus uh, Germany or if they just keep going. Because, I mean, they, they got off to a really nice start today with, you know, Gobert not starting. So I have a feeling it's going to continue in that trend. I, or maybe it was just a matchup-based thing. But France has talent. Um, Victor is, is a cheat code in himself. And I think like Evan Fournier is a guy who turns up in an international play and can really shoot the ball, had a big game today, and is their second leading score, actually third leading score behind uh, another former NBA player in Gershon Yabusele. I think he was like a top 20 pick for the Celtics a few years ago um, and didn't really pan out. But he is, you know, he is a force. He's really big. Uh, really strong and and is kind of like a, a a very physical three and D wing out there, and is you know has just been a he had a huge game today as well uh, versus Australia, and uh, I mean I'm, I'm sorry not Australia versus Canada, and you know I've just been very impressed with the way all these teams are playing like it's very competitive basketball out there. I thought the two games today outside of USA Brazil were fantastic like the atmosphere, uh you know was you could feel it through the screen. And the, the brand of basketball is very physical. So I was really enjoying it. And then USA Brazil was just like, you know, shout out to Brazil for trying. It was just the, the gap in talent was just too huge. And that yeah. game was over by the second quarter. Yeah. Brother than Bruno, they didn't have a whole lot there. I, I am surprised. Oh my God, by the Bruno, way bring him back to the league. <laughs> well, I, well, he's a long-term project. Um, I am a little surprised by the way that Canada flopped today. Uh, you know, Dylan Brooks not shooting so well in a big game. We've seen Paul that before. Murray. 
Jamal Murray has some questions to answer. Like uh, that is, uh, you know, what honestly, is it about the Jokic gonna... screen and the Jokic two man game that it's just he he becomes on fire. Like I don't think he missed a shot versus the Heat in the finals. Yeah, <laughs> but I also don't think he's in shape. I, he didn't look in shape to me. I and I, I, I think there's like, going to be some hurt? questions. I, I don't know, but he looked awful the whole tournament. I mean, RJ Barrett looked better uh, most of the better tournament than than, than than he did, and uh, was yeah, he was. Than. Dort was better than him. They they were all better than him. Like uh, he he did not play very well, and that's kind of a weird thing to watch. Or and when they we weren't playing just... Nikhil Alexander Walker either. No, I know, I know. Well, I think and again, they, of, they, they... I'm sorry to keep interrupting. Speaking of guys that are playing, but you know, we mentioned France. Bilal Koulibaly who was a, a, mm-hmm. a lottery pick last year and played with Victor um, before they got drafted. You know, he's pretty good. He's not playing for France either. So it tells you about like even though there's not that many NBA guys, like the mm-hmm. level of you know, um, I just think competition, it, it, it's its real. Like, Koulibaly is not being gifted a starting spot because he was a lottery pick in the NBA. Yeah, well, Tyrese Halliburton is really, playing over him. But it's, uh, well, and again, that was a failed Knicks draft pick. Um, we'll, we'll get, I want to do uh, real quick when we come back, I want to do stock up, stock down um, on uh, on on the guys who are on this Team USA. So we're just going to do stock up, stock down. Uh, what we've gotten out of all of them. I'll go through some of the numbers. Before we do, I want to mention a great sponsor, Five Reasons Sports Network. A stock always up here, our friend Lynette, two N's, two T's. Find our insurance by Lynette.com, 954-581-8800. One of the biggest Heat fans that we know. She's on our Discord, off the floor. She's always with us on playback as well and following the podcast. 954-581-8800. You need car insurance, life insurance, renter's insurance, homeowner's insurance. She's the person to go to. The insurance agency that works for you, based in Lauder Hill Services, the entire Tri County area, 954 581 8800 or insurance by Lynette.com. All right. Leading the U.S. in scoring, I believe this is updated. Yep. Anthony Edwards, 16.8 points, 3.5 rebounds, 1.8 assists. Uh, there was a lot of garbage time points today, which we benefited from yep. on prize fix. Would you say 23 years old? He's been everywhere. He's been all over social media. He's been sort of he's been he's gone to a lot of events. Um, uh, again, he's kind of the you know the happy go lucky one on this team, so to speak. Um, I, I got to think his stock is up just from in terms of perception, which is what we're doing here. Just in terms of the fact that he's fit with this group, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, he came into it, at, you know, after kind of becoming the alpha last year right and 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 taking that role and then coming into it this year talking about oh they're gonna have to know work how to play how to play around me right like i'm gonna be the number one option and having those comments um and he's backed it up like he hasn't been the number one option necessarily but when he comes in the game like he finds his way and i think he doesn't try to do too much with the ball like when he gets hot i think he he he's a heat check guy like he will try to get the ball back and make a play whether it's a shoot or or you know, like he, he can pass every now and then with, when they send um, extra help, extra attention. But like the guy can really score and get his own bucket. Like the athleticism is just awesome. And I do think he's a guy who can play alongside uh, others because they've got guys who can pass the ball and they've got other guys who can score the ball. Like they don't need him to create everything. So I, I think it's been cool seeing him try to fit in as well. And we know he can defend. So, you know, and you, you've been seeing him in these lineups with Bam. Sometimes Bam and AD, a lot of times with KD as well. And then like a Derek White, like that's those lineups are insanely hard to score on. And, uh, you know, I think Ann has done a pretty good job of even when, you know, he's not getting like a huge amount of shots up of still trying to, you know, be a threat out there and play defense. Like it, it doesn't need to be him. But yeah, he still comes out um, as leading scorer right now. And, and these stats, by the way, are are for the last four games. So the the. The tournament game today and the three, I guess, group play oh. games, you would call oh. it. Those first few exhibition friendlies, you know, are not being counted in these stats. But regardless, I think like in these games, again, doesn't feel like he has the highest usage or the highest load. And he ends up still coming out as the leading scorer. I know he had that big scoring game that is also juicing up these numbers a little bit since it's oh. not that many games. But like I, they don't need him to be a, the number one guy. But he can be at any moment, and he's doing this off the bench. And, and like I mentioned, right. very, very dynamic two-way lineup. So it's it's been fun to watch. All right, I'll take the next two: um, Durant and LeBron. Uh, say this first thing: uh, the fact that KD came back off the injuries and was just on fire. 
Uh, now he's the all-time leading scorer for Team USA. I mean, I, I, if there are any questions about what Durant can be when he's healthy, I, those questions should not exist. Like, th- this is just a question of health with him. He can play at this level for another two or three years, I think, um, pretty close to where LeBron is. I mean, he's always been conditioned differently than LeBron, but – for his game, like it aged, it, it's aged perfectly. Other than the absences, really, and other than him putting together some teammate combinations that don't really work. Uh, but beyond that, I think this has been a reminder of, of just. I mean, he's a, honestly the easiest scorer we've seen in this era. It's why they call him Easy Money Sniper. Um, LeBron, I've loved LeBron's Olympics. I I think him him looking at this team, realizing what they needed that Halliburton probably wasn't going to play a lot. Steph was going to play off the ball uh, more that they really needed somebody to handle and set everybody up. And I mean, if you look at LeBron's numbers right now, this has been for somebody who does have a huge ego. We know it. Nobody denies it. He's kind of played egoless basketball this entire time. Um, He's just taken what they've given him. He's his passing has been at another level. uh, And, and, and the numbers reflected 13.8, uh, points, 5.8 rebounds, 7.8 assists. He's been tremendous, I, I I think. And it more better than if he was averaging 22, in my view. How do you think Booker's played? He's averaging 12.3, 2.5 rebounds and four assists. I've actually been pretty impressed with him. Like, I, a, another guy who, you know, doesn't get a lot of credit for being able to play well around others. He's done it now, you know. Uh, you know, they have, they've had some faltering playoff runs these past couple of seasons, but like Booker can do it. And I think seeing the way that he is, you know, his role has changed drastically playing alongside these guys. He's not really creating on ball. Most of the time, it feels like him and Steph, you know, with Steph, of course, running around more cause he's, he's much more prone to doing that. But him and Steph feel like kind of like decoys out there, right? Because you have so much scoring talent that you can, it, it, you know, have these guys, be overqualified to play like Duncan Robinson sort of roles, right? Where it's like you can just come off of screens and be a shooting threat and that's going to generate offense in its own. It's like you, you have so much else, right, that you can afford to do that. And Booker has just been more successful at it so far. Like Steph hasn't shot the ball well from three. He's actually been much, much better and, and more impactful like from two, right, whenever he does get open uh, running around than – the, uh, from three, which I think, you know, will come around. It's only been a few games. Even It, it hasn't been good yet, yet, yet though. Uh, but I do think it's a variance thing. And right now, Booker is just the one doing it at a higher level because the shots are falling. But he is out there, like, hustling on defense, trying to fight over screens. Like, he's not playing lazy superstar basketball where, it's you know, all the effort is 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 put into the offensive side of the floor. And then on defense, they're, they're kind of being thrown on you know, the, the weakest offensive player. Like, it's none of that. He is really trying to fight over screens. He's playing defense. And, um, like, I've been impressed. It's that's This is what I enjoy about this, too. It's like these teams are so stacked that guys are essentially forced into playing roles that they would never play in the NBA. And I mm-hmm. enjoy watching that. And, and that's why, like, I understand, you know, the need for, like, a Derek White or whatever. But I also, mm-hmm. I'm like, make these superstars play defense and play a role because they don't have the offensive load. They can use, you know, they can use that energy that otherwise, you know, they would be using if they were, if it was the NBA season, like, you know, use it on other things. And I think Devin Booker has done a great job of that. All right. I'll take the three bigs here because they're kind of all in a row. Although Drew Holiday's scoring kind of separates them. MB is averaging 11, four and one. Anthony, a lot of that was padded in the first half today. Uh, Anthony Davis, 9.5, 7.3, and 2.5. And Bam, 8.5, 5.3, and 1.8. I, I think what's pretty clear about this so far is that unless Embiid is featured, he's not the guy to fill the role. Not in this level of comp, not in this type of competition. I've been very impressed with AD. I mean, before we've talked a lot about Bam. But I've just, I've just been very impressed with AD. I, I I think that sometimes we get caught up in uh, with him specifically the the street clothes thing and everything. He played seventy five games this past season. Um, there's always it's always it's hard to be LeBron's teammate. Okay, I, I witnessed it firsthand in Cleveland and in Miami. I think he does as good a job with it in handling all that stuff as possible. I always will wonder kind of what he would have continued to be. If he had or developed into, if he had remained sort of the number one guy in a franchise, he didn't want to do that in New Orleans anymore. 
Um, but I've been very impressed with him. I, to me, I, I think he comes out of this thing. A lot of this coming out of Olympus is coming out unscathed, right? Like no damage to your reputation. AD is not going to get any of that. I think Bam has enhanced his reputation with the general public because he's played on the same level as AD. Like I think there are some who just watch the Lakers, watch AD, watch it, and don't realize like Bam can get to that level. Bam has outplayed AD in certain games they played against each other. I remember one uh, a year ago as well. So I think they both enhanced their reputation. I think with Embiid, he's polarizing to begin with, and I, I think this is going to cement opinions about him. Like, yes, you're an elite <laughs> centerpiece of a franchise. You probably won't win a title as that, though. That, that's kind of what it feels like, and I know I'm playing the hits with you because it's Philadelphia, but that that's sort of what I've taken out of this. Um, let me let me get to uh, – Drew's been great. Drew's been great. I think we thought Drew would be great. Still a high-level role player like you mentioned. I want to get to Curry with you, though, because is this a shooting slump or has he lost something? Because, I mean, he's the same age as, as Durant, but Durant looks better. I don't think he's lost anything. Like I mentioned when I was talking about Booker, I think their roles are kind of similar, but Steph is a, doesn't stop running ever. Right? We're like, <laughs> that's not necessarily the case with Booker. I think both of them are playing a role, and I think right now, Steph, the shots are just not you know, falling for him. I think it's a variance thing. There's no way I'm doubting this man shooting. Like That's the one thing I don't think it's just – I don't. that's not going away. This man is the greatest shooter of all time, on and off ball most likely, and – you know, I, I'm not really doubting that. I'm expecting the 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 shooting to come around soon. I'm, I am surprised though that it's taken this long. Like it hasn't been that many games, but it's been a few games. Like I don't, I think he's had like one good game. If you even if you include like the the first few friendlies yeah. and all that, I think it's been he's like one, one good game. He's had one, maybe two. I don't. I'm not even sure if it was two. Uh, well, as what's far interesting as about that, Alex, is that one of the things that's always talked about with Curry is that he, and I know this is kind of seems like a joke when he's played with Golden State all these years, but that in certain years recently he hasn't had as much help, right? And that a lot of the burden has fallen on him in part because Draymond suspensions, Clay's decline, Durant leaving a few years ago, et cetera, Wiggins disappearing for portions of the season, that all of this stuff um, has fallen on, on Curry and can he lead in that way anymore? And now he's on a team where he can be a complimentary piece, and he really hasn't contributed a lot. I mean, I, that, which, I, again, I'm the biggest Steph fan that's out there, personally and professionally. I, I, I love what he's brought to the game in every way, um, the way he carries himself. But I'm waiting to see a Steph game. We have not seen it yet. And it's you can argue that Devin's outplayed him. And I, that's – Oh, for sure. I think – Devin has – right. But and the I shots have fallen for him, whereas they just have right. it with, with, with Steph, and that feels like the biggest difference because – like right. as, as we know, like like I mentioned before, he he's essentially a you know a Duncan Robinson out there. So you know he doesn't have quite as much shots up to get as he does in, in in Golden State. So sometimes it's like it's either those threes or nothing, right? Other than the the rare times he gets twos, right? And and those have been fine. But it feels like those threes are being covered very well, and he's just not really hitting them. He's not getting open ones, and he's not hitting the ones he usually hits. So uh, I, I think it'll come around. But if it doesn't, like you. You can't you he he I think he's good like as far as fitting in around other talents. That's another guy like I would yeah. give credit to because he doesn't he doesn't seem like right. he, he needs to have the ball all the time and he can just play that role and he'll be fine with it. Like he seems more than fine with it. It's playmaking out of that and whatever. But the shots absolutely have to fall. Booker has just you know flat out been he more effective better. because the shots are falling. All right, let's get to the last three. And I I <laughs> I, I you know there are two Celtics on here. Um and I would argue that. Uh, well, here, let me give you the numbers first. Tatum, 6.3 points, 6 rebounds, 2 assists. Uh, Derek White, 4.8 points, 1.8 rebounds, 2 assists. And Tyrese Halliburton in a very limited role, uh, 2.7 points, no rebounds, 0 0.7 assists. Uh, let, let's start with Tatum and White first. It, 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 it feels like it's been stock up for, not that Derek White's a better player than Tatum, he's not. But it does feel like it's been stock up for White and stock up for stock down for Tatum, just because it doesn't. I don't really know what Tatum's role is on this team. Is that is that yeah. fair? No, I I think it's a hundred percent fair. Like, you know, um, he his game just looks very awkward out there, translating to the Olympic setting, and not just that. It's like translating to coming off the bench or something, or even when he's starting. Like he just. He looks sometimes like he doesn't know where to be. He doesn't know like when to pick his spots to contribute. 
And I think it's like he forced he he forced a, a couple of possessions in, in in the game today. Like one where he just ran into like three guys in the paint and got a foul call out of it and got free throws. I, I was perplexed that they gave him that out because I was just perplexed with the decision in the first place to not pass out of that. Um, and no, Derek White and Drew Holiday are not better players right now than Jason Tatum, but he just hasn't been effective. Like he's shooting 39% from the field in the Olympics, right? Like that's that's crazy. You think he hit the percentages would be higher, right? Like you have all this help, all the load is taken off you. And you know, like he can get to the free throw line for them, right? Like you can get, give him credit there. We know he can play defense. That's fine. That, that's all fine and dandy. He, another guy who doesn't need to pound the ball to be effective. But the mm. problem is that he just hasn't been effective. Like from two, I think that's where it's really been, you know, it's kind of like the opposite problem of Steph. It's just like once, if it's not an open three, like I'm like, what are you, like it just feels like the, the offense is going nowhere once he has the ball for more than like a second. Or two. It, 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 it seems to kind of me like he's trying to prove what his value is on the court. But again, not only is he shooting 39%, but this comes after him not shooting well in the finals. It comes after him not shooting well in clutch situations. And I do think this is going to, in some ways, affect perception of him. For those who want to anoint him as next, he wasn't the best player on his own team in the finals. He's not even the most effective player on his own team in Team USA because Drew has been more effective and more important for them. We can make an argument about Derek White because the minutes have been more limited. But certainly Drew, Drew percent of 46. That's awful. I know. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. It doesn't look like he knows. You, you know what they want him to be, I think? They want him to be like Carmelo was in the Olympics, and he's not Carmelo. Oh, my God. He's so far from that. Right. I mean, and that's and look, I had my issues with Carmelo. OK, I to me, Carmelo was Alex English. If you if you put Carmelo's numbers next to Alex English, who played for Denver for years, like they were the same numbers. Carmelo got overhyped, in my view, in some ways, because he won the championship after one, in one year in Syracuse and also because he was in New York. OK, I, I don't I think Carmelo got put on the LeBron, Dwayne Wade, CP3 level when he didn't belong there necessarily. OK, oh, I am I reading this right? Really, that yes. Jason Tatum is shooting zero percent from three. I mean, that, it wouldn't surprise me. Do you remember him I'm, making I'm, one? I didn't realize it was that bad. Like that he has no role on this team. But that, what I'm saying is, like Car Carmelo, yeah, would have found scoring. He would oh, have he found was scoring. Fantastic in this role. Okay. Was, I, I hate to say it, Paul Pierce would have been. I I I know that's sacrilege, but I they're looking for some. Honestly. Let me let me throw this at you right now. We're not even going to get into the gym. Well, we could we could ask the Jimmy question before we close here. Would Paul George or Jimmy Butler be more effective than Tatum right now? Absolutely, absolutely. I think I'm not sure about Paul George just because sometimes he, you know, in certain games like already I think he on, would be. on his team, I, I think, I think you can make that case for sure. Especially because Tatum yeah. is just playing so bad, so it's kind of easy to make a case right. right now for another star. But I just think like PG is a guy who sometimes like almost just blends into the background when he's not having a, yeah. a great game playing with other stars and it's fine. Right. Like it's cool to have a star who can do that and just play a role. But I, I don't think he would necessarily be awesome. I think Jimmy is more than fine playing a role, but I do think yeah. like it's him getting downhill and playing that bully ball style. Like I think, you know, would be, would be cool here too. And I just think him that he would be more effective at that than what Tatum is doing right now, which is not being effective from two or three. Would Jalen Brown know, be more Shout out to him for playing right defense now. and rebounding, I guess. I, well, I mean, that's pretty much what he did in the finals. Uh, what, would Jalen oh, Brown oh, be oh, more oh. effective than him right now? Uh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, because I think in, in general, like Jalen Brown is a guy who doesn't try to, you know, um, dribble, dribble, dribble too much. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's that big of a difference between what he does in the regular season. Uh, but he's another guy who is obviously streaky and would have a smaller role, smaller load. So it could be like I could see him slumping too, or like yeah. you know having more turnovers and points in a certain game. Like I think you can make a case like Brunson would have been nice, or even Mikael Bridges. Not yeah. to not not to uh, call out two Knicks guys there, but I think those, those right. are two guys who come up in my head as like guys who could have helped. I think Brunson is just that good. Um, and Bridges, you know, wasn't great last year for Team USA, but with the amount of talent here, like I think he would be overqualified for the role that Derek White is currently in. Like I think Bridges would be pretty yeah. good in that role. All right, and the last one, and then we'll close here. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton just really has not not gotten out of the gates. I mean, I I think, and you mentioned it, that could have been the Brunson spot, 
also. Um, both of them were on the team last summer. I, I think Tyrese, I think we've seen a little bit, some of this with him with style of play last year, that Indiana, the way that they were pushing, and he, he shot the ball so well before the All-Star break last year that that energized their offense. But I think there's been, a, there's definitely a stock down with Tyrese Halber. It does not mean that he can't recover from it. You know, he, I think him, Siakam, that group in Indiana will be competitive this year. Uh, but obviously he hasn't shown out. All right, we've gone too long on this thing. Thanks to our sponsors, insurancebylanet.com. Prize picks. Use the code 5, F-I-V-E. Thank you for listening to the Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. After all, someone needs to listen to my dad. <laughs>